Hey friends, Dustin here from Vintage King, and today it's my extreme pleasure to introduce Francois Curel, Director of Product Management at Avid, and we are talking all things Pro Tools Carbon today. We are getting into the nitty gritty of what the R&D process was like, the latest version of Pro Tools, everything that's included, and most importantly, who this interface is for. Well, Francois, thanks so much for being here, man. First question, what was your involvement with the development of Pro Tools Carbon? Hey, thanks, Dustin. It's great to be here. I am a, I'm in charge of all things Pro Tools uh, from a product development standpoint at Avid. So I run everything from Pro Tools software, HTX hardware, all the interfaces we make, as well as the S series control surfaces. So this project in particular is under my purview. Um, and it's you know multiple members of my team that have been specifically you know coming up with some of the ideas behind Pro Tools Carbon, um, coming up with the designs, and then working with our engineering teams to uh, to implement them into an actual product. Um, so it was more for me. It was more about giving guidance, you know, kind of removing roadblocks for them, uh, letting them be creative. Uh, and then I got super lucky to be part of the alpha team for this. So. I've been an alpha tester of Pro Tools Carbon since the beginning of July, recording here in my uh, in my studio in San Francisco. So it's been uh, it's been amazing. Very nice. So just at the top of this video here, for anyone that's watching at home, they immediately want to know what Pro Tools Carbon is. What's your thirty second elevator pitch on it? So we call Pro Tools Carbon a hybrid audio production system, and essentially, it's a complete Pro Tools rig. So when you buy Pro Tools Carbon, you get everything you need uh, to get producing music. You get your interface that connects directly to your computer. Uh, you get Pro Tools software, and you get over 120 plugins. Um, then what you know what Pro Tools Carbon is is first of all an amazing sounding interface that gives you enough I/O to record a full band, and then it has this you know really sort of where it comes into its own is what we call the Pro Tools Hybrid Engine. And that allows you to both harness the power of your computer. You know, host computers today are super powerful, so you can do crazy stuff with processing and virtual instruments. But what you also want is to have on-demand, low latency paths to do tracking and overdubs. And you want them to be always available and you want them to be in the lowest latency possible so that your performers have the best experience. So with the Pro Tools Hybrid Engine, you can just turn a track into DSP mode and you have sub one millisecond latency even using plugins. So that's the power of carbon. You don't have to sort of do any trade-offs between using the power of your computer and using the onboard DSP of the box. It all works completely seamlessly. Cool, so I think a pressing question for some engineers and producers, they, they might wanna know what is the difference between Matrix Studio and Pro Tools Carbon? How are they different? How are they the same? Who is each of these for? Yeah, that's a great question. And considering the way they look, it's a very legitimate question. So Matrix Studio and Pro Tools Carbon are totally different animals. Uh, the similarities really lie in the industrial design. So when you look at the front panel of both interfaces, they look quite similar. We decided to take some of uh, similar cues when it comes to industrial design. And also with the ergonomics of the front panel and some of the workflows you would have using the buttons and, and some of the rotary encoders in the front panel. Um, they were also both specifically designed for Pro Tools, but that's pretty much where the similarities end. If you look at uh, Matrix Studio, I would say it's more of a sort of monitoring slash router interface. Also, it's designed as a DigiLink interface, so you, you have to have either an HD native or an HDX system to connect it to. Uh, it, would, it would actually work standalone as a, as a router in a facility um, but as far as interacting with Pro Tools, you need to have one of those systems. Uh, the I.O. complement is quite different as well. Um, Matrix Studio is built more as a Swiss Army knife of audio production. There's only two mic pre's, but there's quite a bit of line in, line outs, ADAT connectivity, 64 channels of Dante. So in the end, Matrix Studio is, a, is an interface that's very well suited for more post-production type um, applications and it's built to be a monitoring in Dolby Atmos. Um, there's also another component to Matrix Studio that's really interesting is the fact that it has built-in speaker calibration, which is really important, especially when you're monitoring in Atmos. And finally, Matrix Studio is a collaboration between DAD, Digital Audio Denmark, and Avid. 
So we basically laid out what we wanted the interface to be. We had some back and forth with DAD, and they're the ones manufacturing it. So now move over to Pro Tools Carbon. Pro Tools Carbon is basically a complete production system. Uh, you connect it directly to the computer. Uh, it comes with Pro Tools, and it has um, an I.O. complement that's really geared toward recording music. Um, it has eight mic pre's, it has four headphone outs so that everybody in the band could get their own cue mix. Uh, so we've definitely designed it with musicians and producers uh, in mind. The other thing about uh, Carbon is that it has built-in DSP acceleration, uh, which is something that the Matrix Studio doesn't have. Uh, and finally, Carbon was designed from the ground up by Avid's engineering teams, so 100% made by Avid. Very cool. So speaking of that, building it from the get-go, when you guys were whiteboarding the idea, what what initial issues did you guys want to solve for, for musicians, producers, anybody who would be using this? I think, you know, when we, when we looked at uh, making Pro Tools Carbon, uh, we wanted a few things. So the guiding principles were around, first, this is an interface that we would all want ourselves as the centerpiece in our own studios, first thing. Then we'd want a system that would uh, never get in the way of inspiration or catching the best performance possible. So make it as easy to use, as intuitive, as responsive as possible. And then finally, sort of having all of the basic functionality and super high quality standards that would allow anyone to make records. So we really came with sort of these three things as our guiding principles when we uh, when we started conceptualizing what Pro Tools Carbon would be. So a big feature with Carbon is having the onboard HDX DSP acceleration. What can you tell us about that? So Pro Tools Carbon is a great sounding audio interface in its own right, but the true magic comes into play in the combination of the digital board that's inside the interface and its symbiotic relationship with Pro Tools. So the digital board features some of the same technology that you'd find on an HDX system. So the FPGA mixer, um, the DSP chips, those are found in our HDX cards. Uh, for comparison, an HDX card has 18 of uh, the same DSPs and Carbon has eight. But the workflow that we've created with Pro Tools makes that, makes that plenty uh, for you to record a full band with plugins. So essentially, when you're in Pro Tools, you're running your session natively. Uh, you're leveraging the power of your host computer. But what the digital board inside Carbon allows you to do, and we call this the Pro Tools hybrid engine, is to have on-demand, low-latency channels whenever you need them. So basically, track by track, you're going to enable what we call DSP mode, and instantly that track is moved to the hardware. You can have DSP plugins running, and your artist, your musician is going to get monitoring through plugins at sub one millisecond latency. And that's at any point in, uh, in your process. So it could be that you're straight off recording a full band. It could be that uh, you've done a lot of pre-production using tons of virtual instruments and you're already like taxing your host computer to the max. Well, you still have all of this available DSP to do your low latency tracking after that. Or whether you are way down almost done with your mix and you need to call back your vocalist to do one final take, again, on-demand DSP power. And one of the coolest thing about this is the ability to turn it off, believe it or not. So let's say you want the low latency experience, you know, you've got your channel strip and you know, all of your plugins for, or your guitar emulation, you're, you're recording your take, you're happy with it. Well, then you could just disengage it and free up your, uh, your DSP resource. Because our uh, plugin architecture, AAX, for every DSP plugin, there's a native counterpart and they're completely identical. They will face cancel. So when you're done, you can just turn it off. And it gives you the, also this amazing capability that um, you can take your mix on the road without taking your carbon with you. And you can keep mixing on your laptop with the exact same plugins without having to lug around your interface with you, and that's pretty powerful. And I think also one thing to add about AAX DSP 
is the professional world who has HDX in their studio, they're all very familiar with it. But sort of in in sort of the broader audience that we're trying to reach uh, with, with this new product, AAX DSP may not be as well known a platform. Uh, well, there's, there's nearly 300 AAX DSP plugins available today from companies like Brainworks, Plugin Alliance, from Mac DSP, from Sonox, from Softube, Massenberg, um, you know, you name it. There's a huge array of plugins that are available uh, for AAX DSP. Speaking of the extra plugins, do you, I mean, obviously Pro Tools comes with 115 some odd plugins. With Pro Tools Carbon, you get some additional. Is there anything in particular, you being a musician, a producer, engineer yourself, is there anything that you're really stoked about that you gravitate towards? Well, um, first of all, I'm super stoked about the um, the plugins that we got to include with Carbon. So, so yes, you said it. You know, it comes with every plugin that Avid makes. So that's already a really nice palette of instruments and processing plugins that can get you very far along. But we've struck some really great partnerships with companies to get some very premium offerings included with Carbon for every customer. So customers will get the BX Console N, which is a Neve uh, channel strip emulation from Brainworks. They will get BX Rock Rack, which is a collection of great sounding uh, guitar amps. BX Master Desk, also from Brainworks Plugin Alliance, which is a, a fantastic mastering plugin. The Purple Audio MC77 Compressor, um, also from Plugin Alliance. Um, customers will get a fantastic sounding channel strip from Mac DSP called the Ultimate Channel Strip 6050. And all the plugins I've listed so far are DSP compatible. So they will all work in low latency with the Pro Tools hybrid engine. Then, you know, for me personally, I use a lot of virtual instruments. So I wanted to, to beef that up because I think Carbon is fantastic for production with VIs because you can do so much in the computer uh, and then you turn on your DSP to to record live sources. So that's like, for me, it's best of both worlds. I absolutely love this. Um, so Pro Tools already comes with UVI Falcon um, and a great collection of, uh, of, of sounds. But UVI is also giving us their Steinway Model D piano. So you get a fantastic sounding piano. And Native Instruments uh, is partnering with us and um, uh, giving us the Vintage Organs Collection. Uh, so already like quite a bit of stuff. Um, and there's two more. Uh, Arturia uh, is including their um, Ref Plate 140 Plate Reverb. And uh, we're getting a brand new plugin from a company called Embody uh, called Immerse Virtual Studio, which is a really cool plugin to simulate studio environments. So what it does is it takes an imprint of your ear, like a personal uh, ear profile. It matches that with the type of headphones you're using. And then it puts you in basically in the seat of, a, a you know, that any uh, in some very, very famous studios. So uh, that's kind of a really cool mixing trick that uh, is also included with Carbon. So, I mean, tons of stuff comes with the product. Um, for me, um, some of the things I, I like best, you know, I'm a, I'm a big Arturia guy when it comes to all the virtual instruments. So I love, the, these are my go-to. I, I love going to those. Um, and as far as DSP plugins, I'm lucky I get access to everything, <laughs> but, uh, I've been playing a lot with things from Plugin Alliance. Uh, you know, they have a new EQ, uh, the AMEC EQ is fantastic. Their Shadow Hill compressor is fantastic. They have a lot of really great guitar amps. Uh, so anyway. There's so much stuff, it's, it's hard to pick a favorite. What can you tell us about the A to D conversion with Pro Tools Carbon? So um, obviously sound quality is absolutely paramount for us with this product. So we basically spared no expense. Um, the converters are 32-bit con converters. But what we've done there is we, we have actually, um, you know, for every input channel, we've included four channels of um, analog to digital conversions. Uh, conversion. So even though the converters expect that um, 120 dBs of dynamic range, by adding four channels, we're adding another six dBs of dynamic range. 
So every input channel in, in carbon has 126 dBs of dynamic range. So having one headphone jack on an interface, you know, pretty much to be expected. Having two is quite a bonus, but having four, that's, that's pretty staggering. It's not something you see very often. Is the intent to be able to track a live band with this? I mean, obviously you have the eight preamps, but um, tell us a little bit about the headphone amplifiers and design there. Yeah, that was that was actually like a really big discussion topic internally uh, because the main designer on this on this project was adamant. This was something that he would never compromise on. It's like we need four headphone jacks. Uh, and yes, the intent is to be able to track a full band. Um, and what's particularly interesting about those four outputs is they're discrete. So you can, in Pro Tools, set up a separate Q-mix for every single one of those headphones, uh, which is really powerful. So you know the drummer will have a different mix than the vocalist, and, and that is something that's pretty unique in the, in the market at that price point. Okay, so we have eight onboard pre's. Tell us a little bit about the preamp design. Is this, is this a cleaner preamp? Is it something that's a little bit more vibey? What was kind of the design process there? Yeah, so for the preamps, um, we, you know, we have a lot of expertise making those and we've inherited that expertise from our LifeSound products. So if you're familiar with the Venue SXL range of LifeSound consoles um, that are being used throughout the world, um, they are all very well known for their sound quality and especially their preamp design. So we, we borrowed the design from the LifeSound console and we've enhanced it specifically for the studio. Um, so first of all, they're exceptionally transparent but they're also very musical. And for every input, we're combining that design with four channels of analog to digital conversion. And that gives us a pretty impressive 126 dBs of dynamic range. The other thing is the way we've designed the preamps is they can take a plus 24 dBU signal. So we didn't even implement a pad on those. They can take such a hot signal uh, there's no pad, so there's less opportunity for distortion uh, at the input stage. And then it allows us to implement, we've implemented on six of the inputs, a um, variable impedance circuit. So for the two instrument inputs in the front, you got five different impedance settings that you can choose from. So specifically, if you're going to plug in a guitar and you're going to use, let's say, a tube amp emulation, you'd probably want to go to one mega home impedance to really get that feel. But if you get, uh, if you're going to go through a distortion pedal, you'll probably go through 230 kilo home impedance to get that that you know the the real feel of playing through a through an amp. And then on four uh, mic inputs on in the back, you also have a variable impedance circuit, which here has I think only three settings. Uh, which allows you to have more tonal options, especially if you're using things like a ribbon mic. Uh, there's some pretty subtle, um, uh, subtle differences. So I think you know overall the goal was to create as much flexibility as possible from the input stage. So they're exceptionally transparent, but you have the variable Z, and then you can use any sort of plugin you want to color to color the sound. So your basically your tonal palette is endless. And that's enabled by taking the route of, no, they're not vibey uh, preamps uh, from the get-go. So Francois, in the ad copy, you guys talk about how Ethernet is the future. Why did you guys decide to go with that for connecting Pro Tools Carbon? So first of all, um, we have a huge amount of expertise when it comes to Ethernet AVB. That's the standard we're using for communication between our live sound console and all the racks. And Ethernet AVB is a very uh, interesting protocol because first of all, it's a, it's a standard and it has some capabilities that are very unique. One of them is that it has guaranteed latency paradigms uh, over a certain distance, over a certain number of hops. Um, so we found it to be like a very flexible way of moving audio streams be between the computer um, and the interface. And we're really looking to the future. You know, Ethernet is actually very cheap connectivity, um, and it will allow us in the future to leverage maybe more complex network architectures um, 
and and really take this this product and the follow-ups to this product to sort of the next generation of audio peripherals. We really see network-based audio as as one of the key drivers in the industry for the future. So I mentioned that we have 32-bit converters on this. Uh, Pro Tools run at 32-bit float. Uh, the converters are the converters are 32-bit fixed because there's no such thing as a 32-bit <laughs> floating point uh, converter. Um, the digital board runs at I believe 44-bit, um, and we carry the signals over Ethernet AVB at 32-bit as well. So essentially, you have a complete 32-bit end-to-end production system. You can completely remain in the 32-bit domain, which is pretty unique as well. So one more thing to add about our choice of Ethernet AVB for the connectivity to the computer is the fact that we've been working very closely with Apple, who have uh, an AVB stack as part of core audio. So when you plug in uh, Pro Tools Carbon, it's basically declared as an AVB core audio device. And what that gives you is obviously the ability for Pro Tools to leverage Carbon, but also for anything else that uses core audio on your computer to use Carbon simultaneously. So Carbon will show up as two core audio devices, one that's reserved for Pro Tools and one that's available for anything core audio. So you can play your own music, you can play Spotify, or you can even run another DAW alongside Pro Tools and have those work simultaneously. So that's, that's, a, that's a pretty big deal, especially since we recently uh, introduced Ableton Link in Pro Tools. So you could have Ableton and Pro Tools running simultaneously and linked with Ableton Link and both use Carbon at the same time, which is really cool. You know, you touched on this when we were talking about the headphones, the four headphone outs. Was was there anything else that was a part of the process that you guys were just hell bent on that there were, you know, no, like we're not compromising on this. It has to be this way. Um, I mean, there's a there's a few things. Um, it's not just one thing. And, I, I, you know, I believe that when people get their hands on Pro Tools Carbon, they'll notice the amount of attention to detail that went into absolutely every little thing about this product. And there's a lot of, of people in our, in our team that may have issues, seriously, because <laughs> they're, they're so focused on getting every single little detail right. I think you know, the number one that we really wanted to do, and that was a no compromise thing, is the Pro Tools hybrid engine. Um, having this ability to turn on and turn off uh, DSP when you need it, number one. Uh, number two is sound quality throughout, you know, whether it's the input stage or the outputs. Um, you know, there's dedicated uh, stereo monitor outputs on this and the four headphone amps. Uh, these have to all be audiophile grade. Um, Oh, there was there was something else and I and I can't and I can't remember. Oh yeah, um, you know there's there's something about audio interface design that's sort of a little bit taboo and it's and it's fans. Uh, when you make a piece of audio gear that packs in, you know, eight mic preamps with several channels of analog to digital conversions, four headphone outputs, uh, and DSP chips and all of that. There's there's need there's a lot of heat being produced and there's there's need for cooling, and um, you know some manufacturers take the the route of just saying hey you know what you have to you have to space them out in your rack uh, because otherwise they'll get too hot. Uh, we didn't want to do that. We know that a lot of our customers are are pretty packed with a lot of audio gear. They may not have enough space in their racks, and we wanted this to be able to remain cool um, with a rack full of other gear. Now, obviously, a fan is always like, oh, man, there's going to be noise. And, you know, is that is that going to impact, especially if it's on my desktop or very close to my to my recording sources? So what we did is we spent a lot of time with carbon on thermal design. Uh, so there is a fan in carbon. It's an extremely silent fan. It's also not traditionally, um, you know, vertical. It's actually angled in the front of the unit. And we've designed cooling paths within the unit so that there's actually active thermal management and it in the fan reacts to obviously the temperature of uh, uh, of the unit itself. Uh, to be honest, everybody that's been using this um, barely hears the fan. You really have to put your ear to the, to the unit to hear it. Um, so we think we made the right decision here. So there is a fan. 
it's super silent, but you can rack it up with a ton of other audio gear. So aside from the crazy amount of plugins that comes with Pro Tools Carbon, what version of Pro Tools is actually included with it? Great question. So Pro Tools Carbon obviously comes with Pro Tools. Interestingly, it's Pro Tools standard. So Pro Tools Carbon does not require Pro Tools Ultimate to run, and that's inclusive of all the DSP workflows. That's a bit of a new thing for Avid, where all of our DSP workflows were restricted to Pro Tools Ultimate, and now with Carbon, it comes to, uh, to Pro Tools Standard. So you get a one-year subscription to Pro Tools Standard, which includes all of the plugins that we make. It includes the heat option, uh, and obviously it includes um, technical support and all of the upgrades and updates that we will um, make during that first year. Um, obviously, we hope that people will stay on subscription at the end. They'll see the value of everything that we bring new to Pro Tools. But because this is, a, this is a hardware purchase, we want to make sure that folks remain operational, even if at the end of the one-year term, they decide not to renew or they want to take a break. Um, Pro Tools will revert to a perpetual license at the end of that, of that one-year term. So folks will still be able to work. Pro Tools will still work. It'll be sort of frozen in time, if you will. So you'll get all the functionality from that point. Uh, you lose some of the plugins that um, are included with a subscription. You'll get just the basic pack of uh, plugins that comes with Pro Tools. Um, but then you can uh, you can come back on track if you you know after a few months you go you know what I do want the new functionality that they introduced. You just jump back on the subscription bandwagon. It's as easy as that. So uh, we wanted to make sure that folks would just not have to worry uh, about any sort of expiration of software at any point. And all of the partner plugins that are included are all perpetual licenses, so uh, they don't have to worry about those. So one more thing to add about this new version of Pro Tools that ships with Pro Tools Carbon, it's Pro Tools 2020.11, um, which is available on the same day Carbon starts shipping, um, is the new dark theme for the user interface. And it's beautiful. I don't think anyone will ever want to come back to the classic mode it's very easy on the eye. Um, all of the toolbars have been like scrubbed and look very modern. Um, so I'm excited to hear what the communities have to say about this new Pro Tools experience because it's it's pretty killer. Very nice. Um, you know, we touched on it at the very beginning of this interview. But one more time, who who do you see Pro Tools Carbon being for? Pro Tools Carbon was designed for anybody who needs to produce music and record musicians. So it could be an individual musician, could be a band, uh, or an, indiv an independent producer. Uh, I'm seeing some interest, you know, we have, we have a, a beta group that includes quite a few fairly serious producers. Um, they will take that in their studio or as a second rig uh, next to their Pro Tools HDX system. So it's uh, it's gonna you know it's gonna appeal to a lot of different categories of users. I mean, for me personally, I'm 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 in sort of an independent creator. I like doing everything myself, as you can see behind me with with this gear, and this is perfect for me uh, because I can have guests coming in. Uh, and plug into it, but mostly, uh, mostly I will do everything myself uh, and have everything plugged in. You know, my Rhodes, my various guitars, other keyboards, uh, and have all of the low latency at my disposal. But also take advantage of the power of the computer to do a lot of virtual instruments. So I think the uh, the gamut of uh, of uses is pretty broad. But again, we designed this for music. Um, you know, by the way, this is. This is our roots at Avid. You know, we used to be, we started as DigiDesign. And, you know, at the time we were really, really focused on musicians and music studios. And over time, this has evolved to really supplying a lot of Hollywood. You know, now Pro Tools is very much a standard um, in making sound for movies and, and TV. Uh, but we wanted to really kind of get back to our roots here and design a killer product for music production.
All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching our talk with Francois from Avid today, talking all things Pro Tools Carbon. Hopefully you learned something. If you still want more, we just put up a video where we're tracking and mixing a live band here in the Vintage King Video Studio. We had a great time doing it. Be sure to check that out. And of course, as always, if you have any questions about the Pro Tools Carbon, anything from Avid, don't hesitate. We wanna help you guys sound better. Hit up your audio consultant, visit us at vintageking.com, smash that subscribe button, and we'll see y'all next time.